Hello everyone. So uh, I'm taking this session on performance optimizations, and uh, this is very very necessary for us because uh, we have seen a lot of web pages. Everybody can make a website today, but nobody realizes that only the website that loads faster makes sense, right? So today uh, I will introduce you to the work we have done during Google Summer of Code with the project Open Event Web App. Niranjan, uh, Niranjan has already introduced you about the APIs and the, all the things in the Orga server, but uh, I have done the work in the web app project, and the web app project, I will be going to uh, take it forward today. So uh, myself, Ayush, uh, and I'm from India, and I have worked on front-end development for two years, and I like uh, UI UX part uh, of the websites, and I try to optimize it as maximum as I can, uh, I also work in Node.js and on the backend side of MongoDB, mainly the main stack. So, uh, because already uh, there is a lot of discussion already going on on open event, so I'm not going uh, much into depth of open event and what it does. Uh, I will just take care of how open event web app works and uh, will will guide you the whole structure uh, we have integrated uh, from open event orga server and how it is integrated with the open event web app so that if you want to generate your web app what's the whole idea you have to follow right and uh, there there are the two links you are seeing here the one goes to the open event orga server repository where uh, you can go and create your event Right, you can create your event there, and once you create your event, you can go to the above link of Open Event Web App, where you can create your website. Right, so here uh, is the architecture which I have created. So uh, as an organizer, as an organizer, what you need is only the data. Once you have the data, you have to port it to the Open Event Orga server. Right, so. When, when Open Event Orga Server gets the data, uh, because there is a, a lot of discussion on the Orga Server, so you will be understanding that after uh, Orga Server gets the data, there are only the two outputs available. Either you get a zip file with your data, which you have filled on the Orga Server, uh, you, you just have to upload a file, or you can fill it manually in the form, like the type of sessions you want to conduct, the speakers who are going to attend your sessions, and a lot of uh, colors and optimizations you have to do there. After that, uh, there, the, the output will be a zip file from the Orga server or the API endpoint. And these two things are uh, necessary for the open event generator uh, which we have made. Open event generator is made using Node.js because it requires a lot of uh, automation. And when, when we are doing automation, we always try to do it with Node.js because it seems best. So uh, the open event web app already consists of two main components. One is the open event generator that is in Node.js and other is the open event web app which uh, is generated using this generator, right? For example, if you want to uh, have an app for your event, what you need is just to go to the open event orga server and have a zip and the API after filling your data. After you get this, you have to upload the endpoint to our open event generator and you get the open event web app. Because this is uh, done in only three months last year, we uh, haven't integrated it much, but this year we are going to integrate it and make it more usable, right? And so uh, I will show you, uh, video is not working, uh, here it is working, right? So here is the whole thing, you have to just write an email, the API endpoint, and there is a lot of processing going on from our side. You just, you can deploy it on the GitHub pages and it will deploy it like that. So it will ask your credentials and it will go to your GitHub repository. So like a person geekyyd has uploaded it. So it will be uploaded like geekyyd.github.io, right? Similarly, you can host it on your, your GH pages, right? So just, uh, it is very easy. You just need a name of the app and you need an email. You need uh, the data endpoint and you can upload it. Right. There are a lot of things uh, you can do with this. You can download it to your own system, right? Uh, and then you can uh, t you can host it via FTP, and you can deploy it on GH pages as well, uh, and you can share it with everyone. So. Already we have worked on a lot of things. So the web app you are using right now uh, in the event is generated with this application, right? Going back to the uh, presentation. So uh, here uh, we have the main thing which I'm going to cover in this presentation. 
how we have done the performance optimizations in this web app. We have not completed it much, but we are in the progress mode. And uh, I will brief you about what is all about this and how people are uh, not caring about performance optimizations on the client side, which should be necessary to care about. So when we talk about performance optimization, we have to understand what is critical rate path because this is the most important stuff which people will uh, like to know and uh, optimizing the critical rendering path makes your websites more smoother and faster. So uh, going forward to critical rendering path uh, and analyzing your stuff, you should be first aware is uh, does you really need performance optimization or you are much good. And for that you have to measure CRP that is measuring of critical rendering path. I have not marked the tool uh, that uses uh, CRP, which, which, which can, uh, which I can tell you right now. But the point is, what is a CRP? So CRP means that uh, how how you are going to load your web, web pages. Are you going to load your web pages in a single single load, or are you making it separate? I mean, what what is the meaningful content you want to show to the user at first instance, or what are the other things you can you know load it afterwards? You don't have to load it everything at the right uh, initial load and you can make it uh, more like this shown in the figure. Like if, if, if I'm going from an optimized progressive rendering, I'm not loading anything at 1.5 seconds, right? In unoptimized rendering, the whole page is loaded at 1.5 seconds only. While going to an optimized rendering, page is loaded like a nav bar and a bottom bar is loaded at 0.3 seconds while the whole page is loaded at 1.5 seconds, right? So this is the way critical rendering path behaves. Now, when, when we are talking about critical rendering path, we come across various terms that is DOM, CSS, OM, render tree, layout, and paint. So your browser, basically, uh, we as developers never realize what is going on in the browser. If you want to know, there are various steps. Whenever we have our website, there are various steps inside that goes within the browser. One of the steps that is the DOM construction. And the DOM construction itself uh, goes through tokenizing and various things. But what we see as an output is only our HTML content, right? But that HTML content uh, is necessary for DOM and then we have CSS OM. The CSS OM takes your style and makes a similar tree. These two trees combine together and make a render tree and render tree contains only the meaningful information, right? But between, if you have seen uh, the HTML, there is a link tag that you always include at the header to include your styles. That link tag itself is called as a render blocking CSS because whenever the page is rendered, it requires that CSS to load first without going ahead. So it stops there and say, hey, I'm not going forward because uh, I, need, I need CSS first. And at that time, your page just loaded, right? Similarly goes with JS. The JavaScript which you insert in the script tag does not happen uh, to take HTML forward till the JavaScript loaded first, right? So these are the uh, performance bottlenecks we have. We have to see what are the render blocking CSS. And, and the best way to say this is to use various tools available online, which, which will help you that do you really need optimization. One of the tool is Lighthouse. Lighthouse is a Chrome plugin, which you can insert in your Chrome. And then after a Chrome, it is very simple actually. You just have to pass a, your URL in that and it will analyze all your website and give it you uh, what, which part of the website are slower and which parts of the websites are faster. Even if you can use Google Page Insights, which give you the whole idea about yourself, right? About your website. And uh, so I will be taking uh, a bit technical uh, in JS animations and recalculation styles because uh, without understanding these, we cannot understand how the browser will work, right? So if you see the performance bottleneck and you can see the right, uh, diagram on the right hand side, uh, the diagram says of DOM, CSS, OM, and the render tree. The DOM itself is the HTML model you get always, which is a tree-like structure, and the CSS OM is the styling you get. Even if you if you write CSS, you have body which have a front side of 16 pixels, right? So the browser itself understood as it as a tree. Now, it is the duty of the browser to combine DOM and CSS OM together to form a render tree. This is the meaningful tree that will be used uh, to, to see your web pages, right? So there are a lot of steps that are ha happening at the background. And if you want to uh, optimize your website, you have to go to individual steps and optimize them. And then finally, you have to combine them to have the performance optimization at the maximum, 
right so uh, i have some code which i can show you and if you want you can take it and uh, and try it in your websites which can make you uh, make your website faster so if you see the first line it says style.css is loaded directly without being uh, media specified it means that uh, you want to load it every time you don't specify which time it should be loaded and which uh, which time it should be not like if you see the third one it says media equals to minimum width of 40 em means without that uh, without if the page is not having a minimum width of 40 em this line will not run and at time at that time you don't need the CSS. This is uh, very beneficial if you are working on the desktop mode or uh, or the mobile mode. For mobile mode, people use different type of styling, and for desktop mode, they want different type of styling. And this works better for them too, right? The second point says finding the critical CSS. There is a uh, there is a man, Adi Osmani, who is very popular in JavaScript. He's a guru of JavaScript, and uh, and he has a very good solution of finding out which which CSS is good for you and which CSS you doesn't require at the first load, right? So uh, Andy Osmani has suggested uh, had made actually a plugin called critical CSS, which you can download it from the repository I have written here, or you can have uh, you can just take it from npm and after you have it you can see various things which which will help you to find the only css that you require and you can remove the further things and can load it asynchronously when you require them right you don't have to write you don't have require all the css at the first load this is all about css but we, but there are a lot of things in js2 which make your websites slower right people like uh, people are like that they they made a lot of uh, things animations using JS, which can be done using CSS. They never realized that JS will stop HTML to render and will make your page slower. So here comes Jank. And this is very important because uh, if you if you have explored much in the Chrome Chrome tools, Chrome Dev tools, you must have find out after inspecting the element, there is a thing called timeline. When you run Control plus R from the keyboard, it refreshes the page and give you the whole timeline view. Where you see these red marks, nobody focuses on them, but if you can, if you can focus on them, uh, you will see, uh, you will see in the bottom that there are uh, there are uh, other red marks too, which are known as four synchronous layouts. These four synchronous layouts block the whole rendering that is going on because of the JavaScript and the CSS you have taken to prevent HTML load right and our focus if we want to make our website faster our focus will be to remove these red marks that are on the purple shadows right and if you want to do this there should be a very very important thing you have to remember every device have a refresh rate of 60 frames per second it means one frame of that device requires you you, you have only one by 60 uh, time for a frame if you want to consider it as a one frame i means that if if i am using a mobile and i am i want to load my website then the website is divided into number of frames for each frames i only get 1 by 60 of the time to load right that comes to 16.66 milliseconds also the browser itself needs 6 milliseconds to load the pages so the final time comes to us to load each frame is only 10 milliseconds right so if you want to load your website and if you have a website with uh, various images and various things and each if you consider each image as a frame then you only have 10 milliseconds to load this load the load each image right and 10 milliseconds are very less so we have to figure it out how we can do this because we have done the same things in open event web app right so here comes the pixel pipeline which starts from javascript goes style layout paint and composite so these are the five steps that browser do whenever you load your pages right so if you have written any styles if you have used jquery then you must have written dot css property which which will take it uh, which will directly consider css and blocks it till the whole page loads so if you if you have seen here the first thing is javascript so first thing you have to consider is never write any animations in js and even if you want to write it there is a technique to write it that, uh, called request animation frame which i will be discussing soon right so uh, what happens is the, the js 
uh, the browser sees the JS first, and it sees if there is any style that is written in JS file. If it is, it will block the HTML to load and says, hey, let me complete first, and I will introduce you to HTML later. And it will take around, it will take around one minute to 1.5 minutes to figure it out, the whole CSS, constructing the whole CSS OM, that is CSS object model again, and then the DOM, that is DOM document object model, model again, and then your page is rendered perfectly, right? So there, there that's why people, people feel that the website is very slower at mobiles because at mobiles this makes a lot of sense to go from one page to another right and here is the key so what happens is people try to use uh, js to change geometry of the of the objects right for example i want i have a div in html and i want a CSS giving it a width of this and height of this. Now I go to a JavaScript file and write, hey, uh, now the when I click it, to, when I click it, the width should be 15 pixels and the height should be 30 pixels, like that. So what happens is after changing the width and the height, we are very cool because we don't know what is happening. But the browser says, hey, I am in trouble. Why? Why you are in trouble? Because the thing is, layout goes to paint and it includes all the steps again. When you say, when you change the geometry, when you change the geometry to height and width only, the browser itself goes, follows all these steps again. It goes to JavaScript, it calculates the styles again. It goes to layout, it builds the DOM. It goes to paint, it renders it, and then combine all the layers together to lead to composition, right? So your two lines change in JavaScript file leads to the browser in trouble because now it have to calculate all the things again. Right now, if you are changing only the background color or the simple color by using JavaScript that comes under paint, right? Then you are not uh, doing anything wrong in layouts because now you are considering only two steps. The one is the paint and the next is the composite, right? The paint itself only raster the pixels on the screen and the composition because these pixels are rastered in different type of layers the composition combine these layers together to give you the whole layout right so i will suggest if you were if you want uh, this one uh, people may ask hey if i want to change the layout using javascript then what is the best way because you said that if you change it the geometry then it will take the whole steps again and make it slower so if you want to change the layout, there is a thing in CSS called position absolute. And in position absolute, the layer of the layer of the page goes above this. For example, if I use position absolute in a static page, the, the, there is another layer that the browser introduces above the page. And if you change the layout, then only the, the HTML written in that layer will get affected and not the whole page, right? So instead of using position static or position relative, when you are calculating the layout, it is always suggested to use position absolute, right? And that's how you can save this trouble. Another thing is using the paint, right? So paint is very, if you are just doing paint, that it is quite normal and okay because it will not affect much. But it is always beneficial if you can do it in uh, CSS only rather than considering the JavaScript part. Going forward to composite, so composite is very flexible. So if you are not, uh, doing nothing in JavaScript, I mean, if you are not uh, linking any CSS with the JavaScript right now. If your JavaScript is just JS and not including any .css or something like style changing, then you are, the browser will shift you towards the composition and it will not do anything. And that's make your pages faster, right? But now the question arises, if you want to introduce various animations in your website, then you cannot do using it only the CSS, right? You can do it, but if you want to do it, uh, it uh, at a much greater level, at a much advanced level, then you must be requiring JavaScript. And that's why the people introduce this, that is called request animation frame, right? You just need to uh, write a function that is of any name. Here I have written it as repeat often. You can write it uh, any name, you can take it as any name, and then you have to call request animation frame and pass this function. This has already been developed in JavaScript and it will optimize your stuff, optimize as maximum as it can and take you to the another level, right? Now, uh, so 
so now uh, considering that if you have a lot of images in your website then how you can improve it further right so the web app improvements for images what we have done is we have used lazy loading the lazy loading features allow you to load only those images that are required and not the one that are not in the viewport right for example if i want the images in uh, at, at scroll for example if if you see the current website we have in action now and you go to the speakers page you will not find every image loading at first right previously in the previous version what was happening is if the speakers are 200 and if you refresh the website the 200 request calls goes to the server and it will load 200 requests uh, 200 images together and th this takes around 1.25 minutes on the first load but now we have now we have done is we load only 12 images four in the viewport and eight that are not in the viewport because for example if a user scrolls it slowly it will see the images right so we introduce only 12 images request out of the 212 and if the user scrolls down we again send the request and load the images right so so there are some uh, snapshots which i want to show at the end so here it was in the previous versions if you can see uh, in, at the previous version where uh, where we were loading all the images together 23.8 MB data was transferring on the images only and the document content loaded was in 5.52 seconds here at the blue marker and also the 203 requests were passing on but now considering after lazy loading from the 203 requests it has reduced to only 22 requests and if you scroll down it further it will take you 22 requests more and if you scroll down it to the bottom it will complete the 222 right and 204 actually here right so also if you see uh, that finish time was 1.7 minutes earlier which have includes now to 3.48 seconds at the first initial load right so this was the major change after the lazy loading we have figured it out uh, for the images even other thing uh, one person has contributed uh, yesterday is the gulp integration and what he has done is he has taken all the things together like the minification and all we have done uh, compressing the images scaling the images minification and he has uh, done it through gulp gulp is a task runner that that automates your stuff right you have to write task and you have to just call one command gulp sir and gulp sir run through each command each task and will make your life easier so before gulp the google page insights score was 75 out of 100 but after gulp it is now 90 out of 100 so this is also a major change we have done right now right so if you want to go to the pull request you can see how the person has made the change because i have shared the link here too right so every slide you have you have a link right so uh, this is all by my side uh, if you have any questions you can ask thank you Any questions? Yeah. Just in the end, you mentioned the gulp changes. Yeah. Needed, yeah. And somehow you score but not gulp. What are, like gulp is a task manager. What would you? So uh, yeah. So it is very interesting to know that uh, we can do various things in gulps, like. Uh, in uh, speakers page, there there are all five pages here in the website of Force Asia. If you can see, so what we have done is we have combined all the pages together and minified its HTML. Right, the first change was the HTML minify. The second change is to CSS minify. The third change is to scaling the images. The fourth change is to compression of the images. Right. Finally, what we have done is we have run through all the compression techniques again. We have used JZip uh, JZip optimization technique, where you can compress your data and make it more uh, make it a less uh, flexible right so you have you have the zip together that that was around 12 mb earlier now it goes to around 8 or 9 mb which you can download right so the scaling of the images and the uh, and the compression of the images is all done by gulp so the compression is uh g zip compression yes uh, I mean, I don't know, that's being handled by the cdn already right? Yeah, so uh, you can say that, but uh, you know, no, no, no. So what happens is we we compress images, right? So each image, so there are 200 speakers, right? So we have image of around 1.2 MB. And what we have done is we, comp uh, we take the image, convert it to JPEG first, right? From PNG to JPEG, that is already done by Gulp. And then we compress it again by running a Gulp inbuilt compressor. 
re that reduce it only 40 to 50 KB uh, each image. But if you count 200 wise, that it will be a major change, right? So for each image, if it is 40 KB, then if there are 200 and 500 tomorrow, that it can make a huge change. Yeah, so this was, the thing. any other questions? Yeah. Uh, the image is lazy right? Yes. No, it's yeah, 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 exactly. Yes. Yeah, so how you do that? So uh, if you can see here, I have uh, shared. I don't know if I have shared, but I can tell you, uh, lazy loading is there is a JavaScript library known as lazyloading.js, right? So what happens is it just load the images that is in the viewport, right? So uh, it calls an action when you scroll down. So the on scroll event of JS, it calls the images that is in the viewport to take the load. So what happens is if you see, if you have seen the HTML tag, I am GSRC. So just uh, basic, if, if, if I go to basics in SRC, you have to specify your path, right? The image path in which it is in the local system or the server, right? But what lazy loading does is it make a, a pseudo attribute known as data SRC right that is in the html so it takes all your paths data src equal to the path rather than taking it to src when you when you scroll down it takes that data src path and copied it into the src and that makes their image rendering possible right right so this is the whole stuff yeah so the web app is basically consists of two approaches one is the web app generator that is using node.js for the automation purpose, as I told. And the second is the web app itself that uses jQuery and handlebars, basically, right? And the bootstrap to make it more responsive.